these are last year's AP Bio FRQs, and this is how ChatGPT answered them. Now every year, the College Board releases the free response questions after the AP exam. They also later release the scoring guidelines, or basically the answer key, for the free response questions. This is for future students who want to practice the free response questions from past years, or for students to see how they did and how they were graded. And this is an activity I used to do all the time with my students. I would have them answer the old free response questions in class, and then we would grade them either together or I would grade them according to the scoring guidelines to see how they would do on the actual AP exam. Practicing and grading questions is a really good activity for exam prep, but I was curious to see what kind of answers ChatGPT would give on the AP Biology exam. One of the craziest things is that just in the past few days, more information about GPT-4 has come out, which has the ability to interpret images. OpenAI has even said that this has the potential to get a 5 on the AP Biology exam. To remember that ChatGPT is a language-based AI generator, meaning it can read text and respond to text, but it has big problems when we're talking about images, and a lot of the questions on the AP exams reference images and figures and tables. So for all the questions in the tables, I had to feed ChatGPT the data in a CSV format or comma separated values. And for the things that students were required to do to draw or to graph, I had to ask it to describe those things instead of actually doing them. And then of course it couldn't read pictures for me, so I had to either describe the pictures or just eliminate them completely from the prompts. All right, so let's see how it does. Oh my gosh, wow, that was really fascinating. So I'm gonna walk you guys through how ChatGPT, the student, did on the AP Biology FRQ questions. It was it was really interesting. Now OpenAI says that this version of ChatGPT could get about a four on the AP Bio exam, and that's what I also found in this test. Okay, I'm just gonna go through the scores first to show you how they did on each question, and then I'll break through where I think this hypothetical student or ChatGPT could have done better and where it gets tripped up and where it does well. All right, so first of all, I have my score estimator up, so if you wanna check that out and how the scoring breaks down for AP Biology, I have another video, a link below, so you can access this tool. Um, but on question one, they did really well. ChatGPT rocked it. Um, obviously no drawing or graphing on this question, but eight out of nine points, really, really impressive. Question two is the graphing question. They only got two points on that particular question out of a possible nine. Question three, there were four possible points and ChatGPT got three. Question four, also three out of four. Question five, another drawing one and a little bit messed up. Um, there was also a food web that I did not feed it very well. so one out of four points and then question six it rocked it four out of four points keep in mind there is a little bit of wiggle room here and if you feed these answers to chat gpt you may get different scores as well and every grader is may is a little bit different even though there are the scoring guidelines that you can follow so all that said for the frqs based on this score estimator and again this is an estimate if i plugged in a random multiple choice score so let's say they, they, they did decently well in the FRQs. I'm gonna imagine they did decently well in the multiple choice too. Let's say they got 40 right out of a possible 60. That would give an overall composite score of 76.0, which translates to a solid four. So ChatGPT as a student could pass the AP Bio exam if they do decently well in the multiple choice questions too. Now I'm not saying this is a tool that's better than students and it's definitely not perfect. And there are things that were very obvious that I was dealing with the computer when I was grading this. So again, do not try to pass this off in class as your own work, especially if you're given an FRQ assignment outside of class, it's better for you and your practice to do it by yourself. Okay, but let's talk about what it did well and what it did not do well. It missed the very first question. It did not get any points because it was just too vague. It talked about a phospholipid bilayer and how it's selectively permeable, but it did not actually mention what about the structure of that phospholipid bilayer made it so important and made it so that we have to have a channel for chloride ions. And I noticed this in a couple other places. It mentioned correct information, but it was not specific enough. So tip number one to be better than ChatGPT is to be specific in your responses. It did it well analyzing the experiment, talking about what the independent variable was, what the negative control was, talking about the synthesis of the data, even though I had to spell it out and take it out of the data table for it. And it did a good job calculating percent change. Very impressed there. 
Okay, so moving on to question two, where it really messed up. Again, not specific enough talking about the process by which double strand breaks occur in DNA. And this I see with a lot of students too. Sometimes they know a little bit about information and they just don't go deep enough. So again, be specific. So I asked it to describe how it would create a graph and I did give it one point for describing a correct graph and creating the correct axis labels, but it just gave me some common and gobbledygook talking about how it would scale it and the values and didn't talk about error bars or anything else. So it only got one point for the graph. In order to get all the points for a graph on an FRQ, you need to make sure you have appropriate axis scaling, correctly plot the points on the right type of graph, correct error bars if they're necessary, and usually they are, and then look at if there's a statistical difference in particular data points. And usually this is looking to see if there's crossover between error bars. And I do have some videos on that if you need help with learning how to graph or learning how to use error bars. It did get the fact that there was a positive correlation between the number of double strand breaks and the average number of crossovers, but its prediction was really wrong. That one was really challenging for students too, for part D, but it just gave a completely wrong answer answer and its explanation was off as well. So those were the long FRQs. Remember the FRQs in AP Biology, there's two long ones and then four short ones. So now we're moving into the four short ones, which are four points each. Question three, here we go. So this one started off okay, talked correctly about active sites that are gonna bind to luciferin, talked about the dependent variable correctly. Okay, and this one I think had a really hilarious answer for part D because this one did not have data to go along with it and it asked to support the student's claim. So there's a couple of correct answers you could have said for this question. You could have talked about with increased temperature, there's increased uh, movement of particles, so more opportunities for interactions or collisions between molecules and then we're gonna have a higher rate of reaction. Or you could have said that we could have had changes to the active site. so. Changes Changes to the protein because of an increased temperature, which is going to improve that binding of the substrate. ChatGPT, however, said the student's claim is supported by the data if the amount of light increases with increasing temperature. However, without the actual data, it is not possible to definitively say if the claim is supported. If the data shows a tr clear trend of increasing light emission with increasing temperature, then the student's claim would be supported. So very infrequently on the AP bio exam, are you going to see something where the correct answer is, this is not possible. Don't say things are impossible to answer. So ChatGPT did pretty good on question three at the start, identified the fact that it was geographic isolation as the prezygotic barrier. It correctly identified that longer finned individuals would have higher fitness than shorter finned individuals. But it made a mistake that some students can do on AP Biology that will trip you up in that it said one correct thing in part C, but then it contradicted itself in the same answer choice. And whatever you write on the AP Biology exam, readers are going to read your whole response. And if you do say something incorrect that contradicts a previous point, you can't get points for that question. So don't just word vomit everything you know or think is correct about an answer. Make sure you pick the best explanation for an answer, state that, and then stop. But do not add additional information if you think you might contradict yourself or say something that's wrong. Oh, this was the food web web. It did not do well. I'm surprised it got one point based on the fact that it just described the food webs. It did not have the food web to read off of, but also it did that thing again where it listed several answers. And if they had, if any of them had not been written on the answer guidelines, I wouldn't have given it the point. But basically, it listed every single potential correct answer in that first one. So another tip to be better than ChatGPT is to state one answer instead of multiple answers. Another tip is don't ramble. Don't just throw jargony words and paragraphs on here. You have a limited amount of time and you don't need to write perfectly constructed paragraphs and topic sentences. Just get the information out, get it out in sentence form and you'll be good to go. Okay. Even when I asked it to describe arrows and levels, it didn't even indicate the correct direction an arrow could go for labeling the invasive species and the arrow for the feeding relationship. So wrong direction, wrong spot, not good. Also, it just gave me kind of a bunch of jargon about trophic levels and how everything's interrelated. It's a long paragraph for this D part here, but none of it is really correct or applicable to the problem. Again, partially my fault. I'm sure you could do better than chat GPT here. All right, so our final question, question six, it did really well on. Okay, this one I did also feed the data, but it correctly identified modified cap two. It correctly identified that there's a positive relationship between mRNA half-life and the total amount of protein produced. And they have evaluated the hypothesis based on the data pretty well. All right, phew. I hope this has been a useful exercise in learning more about AP Biology FRQs and how ChatGPT could think and maybe not think so well on these types of questions. If you are a student, remember to be specific, be succinct, don't over explain. Only put one response instead of multiple answers for each question and answer the questions as they're asked. You do not need lots of extra science explanations or jargony words in order to do well on the AP bio exam. Let me know what you think of this exercise. I've got lots of other resources on this channel to help you improve on your FRQs and other parts of the AP bio exam. So make sure to subscribe and check out the rest of my resources. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if it's been helpful and I'll see you later.